Calculus BC, we are beginning a brand new chapter, a chapter that will really focus on further applications of integrals. Take a look at our learning target up above. I can find area between two curves. We were used to finding area perhaps bound by a curve in the x-axis. Now we'll deal with area between two functions. Take a look at this theorem. If f and g are continuous, very big criteria to meet. You must have continuous functions. If you do not, uh, this theorem does not apply. And if f is greater than g for every x on an interval from a to b, then the area bounded by f, g, and the line x equals a, that's a vertical line, that's this one right here, and the line x equals b, another vertical line, is simply the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. Uh, what we're going to see is plain and simply this, that when you have area just as such, what we will really always go to is top minus bottom when we are finding area between two curves. Take your top function, which happens to be f of x, minus the bottom function. The reason why this works, just giving you some theoretical background here, let's just say we did a Riemann sum with f and we found this rectangle here and we also went ahead and we found this second rectangle for g right here maybe making that in blue or maybe I'll have it in red actually to really make it stand out. Well you take your big rectangle minus your little rectangle what's left well what's in between here you can see why that's always the case top minus bottom and uh, when you do that you'll be in good shape it's important to note that even here uh, if your functions are below the x-axis wow that can be troubling sometimes uh, I know many uh, kids give a lot of thought here and say is this still true would it still be top minus bottom if I wanted to find the area between two curves indeed it is it's always going to be top minus bottom that being said I think very often kids will maybe begin to have their doubts. They might say, now wait a minute, I understood top minus bottom in the first quadrant. You know, you drew a black rectangle and a red rectangle and you subtracted and we'd have this area, you know, that we see a little rectangle in green. You might wonder if that's really the case here, if that would uh, really happen. Let's just say that we had a uh, you know, top, which would be f of x in black here. And then we went ahead and we took our red one right over here. And, and let's just say that the height was negative 3 and, uh, for f and the height for g was negative 7. And you're wondering, hey, would we really get area, non-negative area in here? Well, think about it. If we did top minus bottom, assuming that this base would just be a 1, you could see you'd get positive area in that regard. So just remember, top minus bottom, the curve that lies up above, comes first. That's your top, and then your bottom's over here. So here's where we can go and, and actually apply this and make some sense of it. These are the types of problems you're going to be doing. So you've got y equals negative x squared. Well, my goodness, that is an upside down parabola. It's going to look something like so. And then we've got y equals 1 over x squared. y equals 1 over x squared, guys. As I always said in AMA, it's the volcano graph. It's looking something like this. And uh, y equals 1 over x squared is non-negative. You'll never have y values that uh, are negative and, and go below the x-axis. But let's just see where we're going. We can say, well, we're going to be going from 1 out to 2. And x equals 1 is a vertical line. That's coming from Vux. Vertical lines have x equals, uh, uh, for an equation, x equals 2 is right over here. And you can see very quickly that we have area enclosed. But you can think, well, how do we go about calculating the area between? Well, 
our x values go between 1 and 2. But what's your top function? Well, you can see that's your 1 over x squared. We're going to say minus. Well, what's your bottom function? Well, that's negative x squared. And guys, when you work this out, you will get the green shaded area. First, stating the obvious, minus a negative will turn to plus a positive. So uh, right now, it's the fundamental theorem. We're going to go from 1 to 2 of x to the negative 2 plus x squared. Maybe not the, the prettiest looking problem to work out. Antiderivative, bump this up, you'll get x to the negative 1 all over negative 1. Uh, but that's really negative 1 over x if you think about it. Uh, take your antiderivative here, you'll get x to the third all over 3. And you could double check if, if uh, you've done this correctly. But the fundamental theorem then says evaluate that between 2 and 1. So we'll get negative 1 half plugging in our 2. 2 cubed is 8, we'd get 8 thirds. I'll say minus, well we'll get negative 1 over 1, which is just a negative 1, plus a 1 third. And, uh, you know, tell you what, before we do too much cleaning up here, we can distribute this negative and we'd get a plus 1 and a minus 1 third. And uh, let's see, a negative 1 half and a 1 add up to a half. And 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds. And right now we can just finish this. We can get a common denominator of 6. Multiply by 3 over 3 over here. Multiply by 2 over 2 over here. Where are we going? Well, we'd get 3 over 6 plus 14 over 6. Final answer is 17 over 6. And that's your area between uh, that parabola and that 1 over x squared curve. So hopefully you can see it's not that bad. Uh, sometimes, however, you're going to see that your problems might get to be a little bit more involved, a little bit messier. Uh, take a look at example two. I'm going to add an x over. We'd have y is equal to x plus 6. Uh, this is y equals x to the third. Very famous uh, graph right there. And 2y plus x equals 0. Well, you can subtract an x and divide by 2. And uh, hopefully you can see you'd get negative 1 half x. Notice what they're really going to ask here. They're going to say find the area bounded by these curves. Ironically, a lot of times they'll use that language in your curves might be lines. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if we could quickly make a graph. Well, y equals x plus 6, and again, you don't have to make a super accurate picture. You know, you'd have a y-intercept at 6, and of course, you'd have a x-intercept of negative 6, if you think about it that way. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a, our cubic function is going to look something like this. And then y equals negative 1 half x, well... That's going to be a line with negative slope, and it's going to look something like so. So without too much effort, without too much effort, you can see that we are enclosing this figure right in here. Now, it, it should also point out that you probably want to get some intersections. Take a look at this cubic function and this line right here. Certainly you could set your y's equal. You could set x plus 6 equals x cubed. Solving can be problematic. You can think, oh my gosh, how in the world do I go ahead and solve this? One easy way is with inspection. Try plugging in some friendly x values like 1. Well, 1 cubed is not going to equal 1 plus 6. Try a 2. 2 cubed is 8, and that is what 2 plus 6 is. This is the point 2, and if you plugged in, you'd, you'd wind up with 2 comma 8. And down here, of course, is your origin. Now, your two lines uh, are going to intersect at negative 1 half x and x plus 6. What am I doing? I'm setting these y values equal. 
and you know that they're going to intersect at a uh, negative x value. By the way, you could do inspection here. You might wonder perhaps if x could be negative 2, well, the left side wouldn't equal the right side. Guys, if you tried negative 4, it would actually work. Uh, but look, I just want to show you that you could solve, of course. You could subtract negative 2 over 2x. just want to show you the power of inspection. You know, that, that's something that we so very often, you know, don't really think about doing as much. Uh, look, I'm going to multiply by this reciprocal. And sure enough, 3 goes into 6 twice. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Wow. Uh, and if you were to plug in negative 4 into either of these lines, negative 4 plus 6, of course, you'd get a 2. Obviously, we're worried about the x values here. But I do want to point out to you that right now, we should be well aware that uh, we need to look at the top minus bottom. You know, the top minus bottom, just want to point out to you, over here in this uh, darker region, my top is the line y equals x plus 6, but my bottom is the cubic y equals x cubed. And if you were to look over here in this uh, other region, the top is the line y equals x plus 6. The bottom is that line y equals negative 1 half x. I'm going to have to break this into two distinct integrals because the bottom boundary has changed. Look at this. The bottom right here is the line y equals negative 1 half x. So I could say here's my top. Here's my bottom. And this is why I have to set up two different integrals. I come over this way and I could say, well, from 0 to 2, I'm going to have x plus 6. And I'm going to say, well, what's the bottom here? Well, this is when we're just going to have x cubed. And it's at this point where, of course, we could go ahead and, uh, you know, get this worked out by hand. Uh, but for the sake of time, especially on this video, I'm going to go ahead and just get some help via the calculator. So here's negative 4, and up here we'll have 0. And uh, then, you know, we'll have x plus 6. And uh, minus a negative is really plus a positive. So I'm just going to make this show up as an x all over 2. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take too long to go ahead and get an answer and to see that this thing is really a 12. But then we can come over this way and say, well, what about this other part? Well, now we can say math and, you know, bring this up. And we're going to go between 0 and this time 2. And uh, what's inside? Well, you don't even really need your parentheses, to be honest. Just say x plus 6 minus x to the third. And, uh, you know, from here, as we hit enter, you can see we get a 10. Final answer is 22. Uh, so most importantly, because that bottom boundary changed, and it changed at x equals 0, you know, here the bottom boundary is y equals x cubed. In the second quadrant, it's that line. We had to make a change. And I'm going to stop the video here.